So what today I would like to talk to you about are the geopolitical risks and opportunities that we see on the horizon. But first, I should just say one more thing about the geopolitical method. So the geopolitical method will look at institutions over individuals. It will really emphasize structural conditions, the geography, the demography, the economic structure, the governmental structure of countries. And only sort of after having taken that structural assessment and then moving on to a cyclical assessment, whether it be the business cycle or the political cycle, whether it be elections or a rotation of leadership in a, in a non-democratic country, only after those things do we look then at the tactical maneuverings of individual politicians, their rhetoric, their ideology. Typically, we tend to underrate ideology and individual personality, and we tend to over, overrate or overweight uh, the, the parties, the institutions, the movements, the social movements, and the, culture, the strategic culture of a country. This is a very different approach than what you get from the news media, and it is a discipline. Geopolitics is not just a catchphrase, it's a discipline, it's an analytical framework. What do you think uh, the chances are of the AUKUS alliance lasting under a Trump administration? Yeah, thank you, and I realize that that's a very important question for Australia. I, I, I actually, I mean, well, first of all, let's be clear about methodology. I have no idea what Trump intends or what's in his mind, and he's a very erratic policymaker, so, you know, I think it is a risk. I think allies have to be very worried about President Trump because he does have a tendency to lash out at allies as well as, as rivals. And I think that could be harmful for countries that have sort of adopted American policy initiatives for their own security, but then they could have, you know, that jeopardizes their relationship with China and then they could have the rug pulled out from under them. So I do think that is an important concern that you're raising. But one interesting thing I've observed about the Trump presidency in the first term and I think it, there's quite a bit of evidence behind this is that his primary objective has been the confrontation of China. So in the case of AUKUS and in the case of Australia and Japan and India, I don't think we have as much of a basis to believe that the Trump administration would be as hostile as we may well see in the case of Europe, where Trump has been very quick to undermine shared initiatives, impose tariffs, um, and and generally turn the tables. So bottom line, I think it's a concern, but the fact is that structurally and from a grand strategic point of view, the US and Japan and Australia and India um, and the UK, specifically AUKUS, uh, US, UK, Australia, these are countries that share enormous strategic interests. And I think they will be upheld even if there are disruptions. And last point on this, I would even extend that to the question of NATO. President Trump has threatened to withdraw from NATO, could happen. Charles de Gaulle withdrew from NATO briefly. France ended up back in NATO, and I'm quite sure that the US would end up back in NATO as well. That is not to elide the risks and the destabilization that could happen over a four year period, uh, but it is to say that from a geopolitical point of view, the underlying national interests ultimately should prevail. And I think that's very much the case with AUKUS.